Hello everybody, Steve Hudson here. In this video we're going to look at the final steps for configuring Cisco's Viral. Um, if you've watched my other previous videos, we went ahead and installed the OVA in ESX, uh, configured the time, and licensed the Viral server. So at this point we need to configure Viral for our specific configuration. So we're going to go ahead and start on that by editing the viral INI file. So there's a lot of settings in this INI file. Not all of them will need to be configured. However, there are some important ones that we will need to go over. Okay, based on the installation, uh, whether or not you use DHCP or static IP addressing, you'll need to set these values here. If you use DHCP, you'll leave this as true. However, I used static addressing, so I'm going to set this to false. Okay, I'm going to leave the primary Ethernet port the same. Uh, I did not use DHCP, so I will need to uncomment this portion of the INI and change the IP addressing. Now I'm going to use the same IP addressing that I used during the static IP addressing uh, portion of the video. Now of course you're going to want to use your IP addressing here. Okay, I'm not behind a proxy, so I'm not going to set this. Uh, still more proxy. Uh, proxy. Alright, name servers. I'm going to leave these as is. This is Google's public DNS, so I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, the saltmaster, saltmaster.cisco.com is fine. Um, this we were going to leave alone as well as the salt domain because this matches the salt domain from the licensing file. Okay, here's the first uh, Ethernet address settings. Um, since I do not have multiple physical Ethernet devices on my server uh, available, I'm going to use dummy interfaces for all of my virtual ethernets. So here's the first one we're going to configure here and to configure that all you do is type dummy and a number. Alright, so we're going to leave the rest of the interface configuration the same. We're going to go to the second one. Alright, so we're on the second one. And we're going to name this one dummy2. All right, and we're going to go down to the third one, and it's going to be dummy three. Okay. All right. Now, this setting may not pertain to everyone. Um, if you have greater than 16 gigs of RAM and you want to use a RAM disk to increase performance, we're going to want to set this. So I do have greater than 16 gigs, so I'm going to set this to true. Okay, we're going to leave the web server port uh, and the web services port and all the other ports here default. Uh, I am in the US, so I'm going to leave that as is. Um, VNC, I'm going to leave off. I probably won't be using that. Um, of course, you can configure this if you want to. And I'm just going to leave the default user accounts for now. Okay, most of these settings here and below we're not going to use. There are a couple more, but uh, they're kind of hidden. So we're going to read through these. All right, password for the UWM admin. We'll leave that. I believe we can change it later. 
Um, more passwords, token. Uh, I do not want to see a lot of debug yet. Uh, Celiometer uh, is currently not operable, so we're not going to configure that. Um, I don't know what Horizon is, so I'm going to leave it alone. Um, the same for heat and cinder. Uh, okay, here. Need dummy interfaces. We will need to set this to true as we did use dummy interfaces. Okay. Uh, no dog food. Uh, okay. Here's the, um, the last ethernet that we'll need to configure a dummy ethernet for. So we're going to name this dummy for. And then image, we're going to leave all this the same and that's the end of the file. Okay, so that should be everything that you need to configure in the viral INI file. Um, now, of course, you'll need to uh, match that up with your configuration. Okay, so we're going to save this file. And then I'm going to close the editor. Okay, so once I've edited my viral INI, I'm going to need to run through these steps here. So the first one is install a networking script. All right, so I'm going to double click on this and it's going to launch a X term. Now what this is going to do, it's going to run a script based on these settings and do a lot of stuff in the back end. Uh, but we're not going to watch the whole thing because it could take a few minutes. Okay, so the script finished and it closed the X term. Uh, what we'll need to do now is issue a reboot. Okay, now our reboot's done. So we're going to proceed to step three, which is install changes. This is another script, and it's going to launch a X term as well. Okay, the install changes script has finished and has deleted the icons for zero through three. Uh, so we'll need to do a reboot now. Okay, final reboot is complete. So what we're going to do now is we're going to launch Xterm and we're going to validate our install. So I'm going to make this a little bigger. Okay. So first thing we need to do is validate the Neutron agent list. So let's type in Neutron agent list. Okay, so we list the four services here and they're all alive. This is the uh, indicator for a live little smiley face there. So if this is not the case, if none, if you don't have all of these alive, wait a few minutes, come back and run the uh, neutron agent list command again. These must be all alive in order to continue. If they're not, there's a problem in your install. Okay, so next we're going to enter the command sudo viral health status pipe grep listening okay so this command should return a couple of services and they should be in the listening state the STD and the UWM server all right, if these are not listening, or if one is missing, uh, be sure to consult the documentation and make sure that everything is correct. Um, you need both of these to be listening. All right, so we only have one more command to run, and it's a variation of the last command. So it's sudo viral underscore health underscore status pipe grep dash capital A. Four, then dash e host id dash e product. Okay. 
Okay, so what this command does is it lists some host information as well as licensing information. So it gives obviously your host ID, which was part of your licensing file. Uh, product ID expires seven. This just means that uh, for the next seven days you can run virtual machines on this host um, without contacting a licensing server. But you'll need constant internet access uh, so that Viral can contact Cisco and validate your license for the license period. Uh, and down here you'll see your salt servers and the product capacity which is 15 on the personal edition which I bought. It's also the same on the academic version. Uh, so you get 15 node count. Okay, so that pretty much does it for the installation phase of Cisco Viral. Um, if you've made it this far and watched my other videos and you uh, have obtained good results so far, um, you're now ready to deploy VM Maestro and start beginning some labs. So in the next video, I'm going to go over that process and we're probably going to import some, some labs from maybe INE. I've seen that in a couple other videos. And uh, see if we can get this thing to stand up and talk to us. Uh, see you then. Thanks for watching.